Good morning. You're welcome to the breakfast. My name is Rumi Fulton. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's another wonderful day. And like I just said before we came on camera, it's a good day to smile. Whatever the condition you might find yourself, smile, laugh, and you know that God's got you. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. What date is today, by the way? Today's the 9th. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I know this because it's about seven days to my birthday. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I've been counting down. So I'm counting down to the day I'm going to have free cake, free rice, free chicken, free... You're uh, bringing them for me, right? They couldn't be free if I were bringing them. No, you're bringing them. It has to be. Uh, it's my birthday now. So you are celebrating. You should yes, let us uh, be a part of your joy. I don't understand. Why do you guys do this? So if it's your birthday, you bring the cake, we we feast together, we pray for you. That's okay, what we do. so when is Jesus' birthday? Does Jesus bring the cake for you? I go to church. I will bless you with my presents. Oh I see. <laughs> That's a good one. I got you. Okay, yeah. you did. You you actually got me. All right, like we said, it's a wonderful day to be happy because like everybody says, happiness is a choice. Today is another day. Uh, that you've had this opportunity to be happy and glorify the Lord who has given you the opportunity to mm -hmm. see today. That's right. So we're going to be uh, looking at a few uh, a few uh, topics this morning. Uh, first of our hot topics will be Tinubu suspends better edu others probe by EFCC. That is the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation. Also, we are going to have a second topic. Yeah, which, which is, is Ayo who blames worsening insecurity mm -hmm. on failure to prosecution to prosecute perpetrators so that's our second hot topic but we'll also be looking at off the press um we want to know what the headlines are saying this morning and we'll also have some top trending stories but first let's take our quote of the day Well, innovation is not a random habit, right? I mean, that's random what the, a, a random act, yeah. rather. It's the a product of a habits, habit. not yeah. a random act. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. We, you, you cannot just jump into something that you know nothing about and innovate. It, no, innovation comes from a need, and a need comes from the fact that you've been doing something uh, maybe consistently and you find out there is a better way to do this mm -hmm. and you create something out of almost nothing but you cannot just you can't miss what you don't know you cannot innovate in an area where you don't know anything about it so yeah, yeah so if you want to improve your life you have to start doing things uh, in that regard and then new ideas will come, come. that's how i saw it yes yeah. i mean it takes me back to um thomas edison um, it takes me back to the people who innovated, you know, everything, technology that we know today. So from the light bulb, I think the light bulb was, was they tried to do that a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And then you fail, but you go at it again, you fail, and you're like, you know what, let me, let me change the equation here. Mm -hmm. um, if 2 plus 2 is not giving me what I want, maybe I should try 2 plus 3, maybe I should try 2 plus 5. Mm -hmm. And then you just keep expanding, and one day it would just be like, wow. Mm -hmm. I was able to achieve, you know, all of these things. I was able to build a product. I was able to, you know, even do more than I thought I could. And that's what innovation is about. Innovation is not something that 
you know right yeah. now innovation yeah. is something new something yeah. out of the box something yeah. that no one expects sometimes it's even something that people don't know they have a need for mm -hmm. so you might just have that need and you're like mm, well how can we do this and boom something comes up yeah, so a light bulb moment comes or, or when when like we said when you're doing something or you're thinking about it you're consistently looking at it even if for instance you're not a footballer and uh, you are an ardent, um, uh, how do they call it, spectator, if mm. you watch out, <laughs> because mm -hmm. now you're not a listener, mm -hmm. you watch football all the time. Yeah. Uh, you, could, you could find ways to, to make some things work, to bring in uh, new rules or to uh, some dribble, uh, dribbling, some whatever it is that will improve um, the, the game. You could be a coach that cannot play football but you've been watching them you've been studying them you've been doing a lot of yeah. things and then you find out if i do this this strategy will work mm -hmm. if i do that the game will be better and so on and so forth so um, that's how people play football yeah. manager and you, you're now a manager you're like no i will put this this player here i will do this here i'll do that so it, it helps you with strategy it helps you it, it sharpens your mind mm -hmm. you know you there's just so much more that the mind is capable of and that's what innovation is the basic about. thing is that uh put your your hand into whatever you want to do mm -hmm. put, like they say put your hand on the floor and never look back and if you don't look back you'll know where to go how to do it and how to succeed even better that that gives room for innovation innovation doesn't just come from the blues you have yeah. to be consistent about it so yeah. that's how it is so what's that plan that you have for 2024 and beyond you'll start to have uh, you'll have to start doing something about it you can't say i want to become a millionaire in uh, by the end of 2024 and you're expecting it to drop from the sky you're expecting uh, to, to find go a Ghana must go, go on the road yourself somewhere in the bush <laughs> and then you find a Ghana must go with millions it doesn't happen like that sometimes yes it could happen uh, yeah. but that would be a product of someone else stealing somewhere something and from dropping. somewhere and dropping and then you are going to pick it up as it is it doesn't yeah. always happen that way you have to start doing things yeah. and creative ways of achieving that will come yeah. that's innovation that's innovation. Okay. That's right. All right, let's go to our top trending stories this morning. Our first story is court finds federal government 100 million naira for violation of Emifeli's rights. Justice Olukayode Adeniyi of the Federal Capital Territory High Court Abuja has awarded the sum of 100 million naira against the federal government in favor of the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Godwin Emifeli, for the violation of his right to personal liberty. The court also declared his prolonged detention without trial as a flagrant violation of his fundamental rights. It is further restrained the it further restrained the federal government and its agent from rearresting or detaining Emifili without an order of court. The judgment was given in fundamental human rights suit filed by the former CBN governor following his prolonged detention in the custody of the Department of State Services. He also asked that the court to order the respondents to pay the sum of 1 billion naira in damages and to restrain them from further arresting or detaining him. The former CBN chief was arrested on June 10, 2023, shortly after his suspension by President Bola Tinubu. Mere hours after the judgment, the EFCC expressed dismay over the development, saying Emirfili's detention was in line with the law. As such, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has now revealed it will appeal the judgment. Right. Okay, yeah, well, I think it's, um, it's not the first time people are just captured, uh, so to speak, and detained without prosecution, without uh, taking them to court in most cases, without sentencing. If you mm -hmm. see that the person is guilty, then sentence him. If you think uh, you have evidence against him, take him to court. Let the pronouncements be made. Don't just hold somebody. They caught a mefili, they arrested a mefili, put him in jail for a crime that was later removed mm -hmm. from uh, the accusations that they were leveling against him. He was having uh, firearms, he was doing this, he mm -hmm. was doing that, and those didn't hold any water. Well, did they account for the time that they detained him over things that they were not even sure? They did not. Mm -hmm. So it's high time we, we learned this lesson and started doing what is right. If you are supposed to hold somebody for 24 hours or less, do that. 
and after that if the law requires you to take him to court do so yeah don't hold somebody without any meaningful yeah because reason. they say you're you're innocent until proven guilty yeah so if i am not guilty then why do you have to hold me for that long but i know like this is emmy Phillips story now how about the normal person on the streets you hear yeah. of people who are being arrested and they're being held do you I've know, had contact being with the prisons. I've, I've, I've done some teachings and all that inside the prisons with the inmates. And I found out that in the particular prison I was teaching, um, catechism, you know, for the okay. church, um, about 75% of these people were awaiting trial. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been there for seven years, ten years. Wow. Awaiting trial. That means, they, they call it ATM, awaiting trial matters. So that means they've been there, they don't even know what their fate, fate is going to be. be. How do you think those people are going to come out and be a, and be better citizens in, mm. the, in the society that has filled them that much? Yeah, and sometimes they're even innocent. So they're they're innocent. Innocent. They're, 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 yes. they're caught because they were coming back late at night from a party or something and then they They capture you here, with everyone. And there's nobody to talk to uh, for you and you're just there and they're saying our prisons are congested. Mm. With who? Are they the criminals or are the people who are um uh, criminals by circumstances what are we talking about mm. so the nigerian police whoever is responsible should start uh, being held responsible for all these things and they need to pay a lot of money if if, if they contravene the rights of people or the yeah. law or something because that would make them not you know just arrest people for the sake of arresting you just come you find me with a laptop you throw me in jail and nobody's talking for me i stay yeah. there 10 years awaiting trial it's so everybody sad. forgets about me it's it's sad very sad yeah. very sad we need to do better yeah uh, uh, well so uh, do subscribers to be barred from calling mtn lines that's according to nigerian uh, communications uh so uh, ncc rather uh, global subscribers will not be able to call uh mtn lines soon due to the non-settlement of interconnected or interconnect charges the nigerian communications commission disclosed this on monday in a public notice signed by director of public affairs department Ruben Moka. <coughs> it stated that it granted partial approval for the disconnection of Globalcom from MTN Nigeria Communications PLC. It said Globalcom was notified of the application made by MTN and was given the opportunity to comment and um, state its case. According to NCC, it had examined the application and circumstances surrounding the indebtedness and determined that Globalcom does not have sufficient or justifiable reason for non-payment non of the interconnect charges. The NCC reveals also uh, that the expiration of 10 days from the date of the notice subscribers of Globalcom will no longer be able to make calls in MTN but, or to MTN, but will be able to receive calls. The partial disconnection will, however, allow inbound calls to the Globalcom network. This is not the first time Glow subscribers will be disconnected uh, from making calls to MTN over the same issue. In 2019, MTN, acting upon a directive from the NCC, briefly disconnected close subscribers over a 4 billion naira debt. In December 2018, the telecom regulator approved mobile network operators to disconnect other operators over rising interconnect debts and the failure of the affected operators to pay. The total disconnect fee in the industry at the time was about one. 165 billion naira. Interconnect charges is the price that telecoms uh, operators pay each other for calls terminating on their network. The interconnect fees reportedly owed by Glow to MTN stands at about 6 billion naira. There were 61.39 million mobile subscribers on Glow's network as of the end of August 2023. According to the new NCC notice, these lines will not be able to make calls to MTN lines from January 18, 2024. Mm. Mm. That's about nine days away from now. Yeah. Uh, what, so, well, I'm, I mean, we can't really talk about telecommunication lines. Yeah, but, but what why, the why NCC do you said was that they found out that Globalcom has no reason whatsoever to, to owe MTN. Yeah. So why are they owing? Is it just a Nigerian factor? Because if it were 
any other problem, I would say, okay, I will stick to my Nigerian brand. I will mm -hmm. be, I will patronize uh, Globe Bacom and uh, let other companies go. But why are you owing the people? You know, you and you've collected pe money because people owe salaries, people owe gratuities, people owe a lot of things, and you're still owing another company that is helping you make money. Yeah, because the fact that I can call from you've charged uh, me one line to the other it means that you are also making money because i am calling people are mm -hmm. uh, and then why will you not pay it's it's outrageous and a whole six billion how do you even accumulate to that go and pay i mean you're a nigerian brand Grand don't pay. don't taint our image because uh -huh. it'll right. just be like ah, nigerians were yes. always owing yeah. and and that's that's not cool it's i not mean good. the airlines are still struggling to yeah. get their money out and other companies are struggling to get their money out and then you are owing your sister company so because you are all in the same yeah. place Go and pay. Go and pay. <laughs> Global Com, go and pay. All right, let's take our final top trending story. It says BBC documentary alleges alleges pattern of abuse by T B Joshua. The British Broadcasting Corporation BBC on Monday said it had uncovered evidence by widespread abuse of widespread abuse and torture by the late prophet Timitokwe Balogun T B Joshua, the founder of the synagogue church of all nations. The BBC in its report said that dozens of former members of the synagogue, including five British nationals, had alleged atrocities committed by the late prophet. Dozens of eyewitness accounts of physical violence or torture carried out by Joshua, including instances of child abuse and people being whipped and chained. Some reportedly interviewees told BBC that they were stripped and beaten with electrical cables and horse whips and routinely denied sleep in scenes which looked like a cult operation. A man was regarded as Joshua's number two at the synagogue, Agamor Paul, who is among the eyewitnesses in the BBC's I three-part expose on the alleged secret life of the late televangelist, popularly known as T.B. Joshua, said that he was interested in enslaving not just Africans, but also Westerners, and targeted them with miracles. According to the BBC investigation into alleg allegations of sexual assault, physical abuse and fabricated miracles and trauma purportedly suffered at the hands of the late Nigerian preacher yielded no fewer than 25 eyewitnesses testimonials. A number of women alleged that Joshua forced them to have abortions inside the church. These were as a result of alleged rapes by the late pastor. Jessica Camille from Namibia claimed her ordeal lasted for more than five years and according to her, she was 17 years old when Joshua first allegedly raped her. She added that subsequent instances of rape by TB Joshua led to her having five forced abortions while at the church. Multiple hand accounts of Multiple first-hand accounts of people also detailed how Joshua faked his miracle healings, which were broadcast to millions of people in Nigeria and around the world. Agomo Paul, who left after staying in the compound for at least a decade, claimed that the miracles were scripted and overseen by him. Hmm. I tried to watch. I tried to watch this yesterday, um, and it's just mind-boggling. But the thing is. He's late. So how, how can we even ask the questions now? So he, he never gets to tell his own side, side of, of the, the story. story. And they're bringing these things now uh, to rubbish his image that he built uh, for a long time. I'm not saying he didn't do those things. I'm not, but we I'm don't also, know. He's I'm allegedly. also not saying they are not miracles, even though I'm not a fan of miracle here and there. I'm yeah. not a fan, but I'm not saying God is so limited that he doesn't do miracles mm -hmm. anymore. I'm asking the question, why are they bringing it now? Of what benefit will it be? You stayed there for more than 10 years and you never opened your mouth till now that the man is dead. Yes. You were doing abortions and all that. Was it that you couldn't survive outside the church, that you were keeping quiet up to this? What do they intend to achieve with this? Well, I, I don't see... I don't see the importance of this except just to rubbish the man who is dead and cannot answer any questions. Yes, he may have done bad things, and if he did bad things, I would have loved it if he was exposed. He had to defend himself. Yes, he was even. exposed at the time he was still alive. So that yeah. He either can defend himself or we shame him so that no, no other person gets to go through that ordeal. But you kept quiet. And if you were there for 10 years, 
and he was abusing you. It means that maybe for the last five years that he abused some people because of your silence. That's why those you people were able to. Victims. Yes. So why are you saying it now? Yeah, well, that's I, my only problem. I need to answer your question about them being um, still being there for that time. Sometimes you're being manipulated and you don't know. And you know when it you're enslaved, yes, well, it well. happens. It, like emotionally, psychologically, you can be manipulated. Sometimes you can be the victim and you don't even realize that you are a victim. That's it's it's psychological. So at the end of the day, it's possible that they were there. They didn't even know that they were being manipulated. They were there for the longest time. And maybe now that he's dead, maybe they've, they've seen the lights. They suddenly realized they were being manipulated. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, I just, I just wish he was here. Because when I saw it, I'm like, I, personally, I might not, I don't really, I'm not into like, um, churches and miracles i want to go there serve my god for myself yeah. i have my own personal relationship with the divine so that's it for me but when i hear of all these churches and miracles i just look the other way but still i, I wish he was here to defend himself if, if have, he was here to defend yeah. himself he can say no i did this no i did not do this do you understand but it's you save other people that might fall yeah victim. yeah but he he spends decades and decades building a name and build and i actually know a lot of people that he helped a lot of oh yes even helped. financially yes. i know he helps and a then lot of people i cannot rule out the fact that all his miracles were scripted and fake and all that because sometimes even the fake person will do a miracle because of the fate of the person who is coming for the miracle mm. so things happen so for you to wait for him to die two years later then you begin to reveal things about him i, I don't find that comfortable yeah. yes name and shame whoever is doing that there are pastors now that are still doing fake miracles and mm -hmm. doing a lot of things that we we don't know about expose them now that they're alive yes so that people get to know that okay if they are the fake Be aware of this yes, people there are genuine pastors out there and there are fake ones out there so if you find out something say it now don't wait yeah. for him to die i mean for the bbc if you if you've been doing an investigation for the longest time why now and I know the BBC has, like, they have a lot of resources uh, to be able to... And then we, we know, we know they are also a propaganda machinery, but, but what they intend to achieve with this is what I do not know. They have labeled a lot of good leaders bad because they do, did not toe their line, you know. Mm. You, you go to uh, Libya and say Gaddafi is the worst yes. person and you put that everywhere and we believe you because we believe in your brand. Mm -hmm. And then we find out later... That Gaddafi has died and Libya is the worst for it. Mm. And you are the one who labeled labeled him a terrorist and all this and that. So we've be, we've begun looking at some of these uh, foreign media with you know. Uh, let me look again. Mm. Why do they want to do this? Whether it is true or not is not the issue. But what do you intend to gain? To gain because sometimes telling the truth is not enough. Yeah. You are telling the truth because of what? What, what, what benefit will it be to the people or to yourself? So you look at all those things. If they had brought it when Joshua was still alive, I, I would have no problem with that. Yeah. He can defend himself. But it's not here. A part of me wants to say, let sleeping dogs lie, right? Is that how they say it? Yeah, yes, let sleeping, sleeping dogs yeah, lie. A part of me wants to say that, like, I mean, he's, he's passed away. Just let it be. But then... I don't know what the aim of this expose is supposed to be. Um, yeah, that's nothing good. But I at least use this opportunity to call on anybody who feels manipulated, who yes. knows that a first certain pastor or imam is fake because mm -hmm. it's not only in Christianity. There are people who say they have healing powers and all that. When you find somebody doing something that is not right, anonymously expose this person if you yes. cannot come out outrightly. Don't wait for the person to because die. Because you're saving other people. It's wicked as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. He may have been a bad man, but you don't l l let him die first before you come yeah. and begin to save him. And his legacy now is just... Because whatever he did, it's possible that the wife didn't even know about it. So now what do you want to do? You want to destroy the children? You want to destroy the woman? I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. So BBC, well, whoever mm. wants to believe can go ahead and believe. Whoever wants to vilify the man uh, that is no longer... So it's a three-part expose. It's, it's, I only started watching the first part and I want to watch the entire thing before I can make up my mind and say this is what it is. So, I mean, if you want to watch it, you, you, can, you can catch up on there's it. There's a lot of elements. There, there might be a lot of elements of truth inside. Yeah. But my quarrel is not that whether there's truth or no truth is, is that... The timing it's not is, here. The timing, the timing is, is not right. The timing is bad. Very bad. Yeah.
Anyways, let's go on a quick break. We'll look at the weather and when we return, we'll be looking at the headlines. Stay with us.